Hello everyone. In this lecture, we shall discuss uh, COP26. The full name is Conference of Parties to, uh, 26. In this meeting, which is being organized at uh, Glasgow, and uh, this is being jointly organized by the UK government and uh, government of Italy. Uh, the Prime Minister of India, Mr. Narendra Modi, has uh, uh, announced India's commitments uh, uh, in COP26, how to control the climate change. So we shall discuss uh, the implication of uh, the implications of uh, Prime Minister Modi's announcement in this meeting. And uh, so before we uh, get into the details of the announcements made by Prime Minister Modi, we should know details of what is uh, COP and what is even FCC. Uh, because COP is basically you know, uh, an uh, uh, entity of the uh, UNFCC and UNFCC is uh, basically United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change and uh, the Secretariat, uh, the UNFCC Secretariat is uh, abbreviated as UN Climate Change uh, is the United Nations entity which is tasked with uh, 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 supporting the global response to the threat of the climate change and the convention has uh, near universal membership of about 197 countries and uh, is the parent treaty of uh, the Paris Agreement 2015. The main aim of the Paris Agreement is to keep the global average temperature rise uh, in this century that is 25th century as close as possible to 1.5 degrees Celsius uh, above the pre-industrial levels. And the even FCC is also the parent treaty of the 1997 Kyoto Protocol. And the ultimate objective of all three agreements, uh, uh, be it uh, Paris Agreement, Kyoto Protocol or even FCC uh, are basically uh, to stabilize greenhouse gas concentrations in the atmosphere at a level that will prevent dangerous human interference with climate system and in a time framework which al allows ecosystems to adapt naturally and enable sustainable development. So that is even FCC. Now COP that is Conference of Parties is the supreme decision making body of the UNFCC or the convention you can say and uh, all states 197 states or countries that are parties to the convention are represented at the COP and uh, so COP reviews the implementation of the convention that is UNFCC and uh, any other legal instruments that COP adopts such as you know, Paris Agreement and uh, Kyoto Protocol and so on. And COP also takes decision uh, which is necessary to promote the effective implementation of the UNFCC and uh, including in the institutional and administrative arrangements. Now coming to the meeting of the COP, uh, COP meets uh, every year unless the parties decide uh, not to do it. The first COP meeting was held in Berlin, Germany in March 1995. And uh, usually the COP meets uh, in Bonn, uh, that is in Germany, and because the seat of the secretary is located uh, no, at uh, Bonn. And uh, the COP presidency uh, rotates among the five recognized even regions such as Africa, Asia, Latin America and the Caribbean and uh, the Central and East Europe and West Europe and others. So the venue of the meeting shifts every year depending on like who is the president. And in 2021 uh, where the meeting is happening for the 26th time that is that's why it is COP26 the president is uh, Mr. Alok Sarma. He is a British politician and he is Minister of State at the Cabinet Office since 2021. And uh, so the, the COP26 meeting started uh, 
uh, on 31st October 2021 and it will continue till 12th November of this month, uh, 12th November 2021. And uh, the location where the meeting is happening is uh, Scottish uh, event uh, campus source and uh, in, in, in Glasgow that is in UK. And uh, uh, so in this uh, meeting, Prime Minister Modi uh, basically addressed uh, on the 1st of November uh, 2021 uh, to uh, the, uh, the COP and uh, uh, there uh, basically uh, Prime Minister Modi started with a Sanskrit sloka uh, that you no know, India you know, Prime Minister Modi said that uh, no, I present I present the nation no, which has uh, given the mantra uh, sam baladham sam um, sam um, sam baladham sam omna sijanatam sam gachadham uh, the Vedic shloka he uh, pronounced uh, no, it says sam gachadham sam baladham sam omna sijanatam uh, which says that uh, we work together we uh, speak together we think together and uh, and we have uh, India has also given the mantra of Sarve uh, Bhavantu Shukhinaham. And so with this uh, you know, Sanskrit sloka, Prime Minister Modi you know, started his speech and he said that uh, uh, India's population constitutes about 17% of the world population. And uh, but however, it contributes only 5% to the world emission. So, uh, if you think about the climate justice, then India's contribution to the world uh, emission is quite low. And uh, uh, so, India, you know, again, Prime Minister Modi said that it's not that only you know, India, or the, he has gone to uh, Glasgow to add one more agenda to the agenda that other country members are putting. Rather, he said emphatically that. Uh, no, India has complied with the Paris Agreement and uh, in, in letter and spirit. And uh, uh, he says that uh, uh, India ranks fourth in the installed renewable energy capacity addition. And, uh, and he said that uh, in last seven years, uh, uh, India has recorded 25% growth in the production of uh, non-fossil fuel energy. And uh, uh, 40 percentage of India's uh, energy need uh, comes from the renewable sources and uh, uh, he said that um, Indian Navy which carries almost uh, uh, or more than the world population because it carries almost 8 billion popular passengers every year and uh, so he said that you no know, uh, Indian Navy carries more people than the world population and uh, so the Indian Railway is now trying to reduce the carbon footprints and uh, so like how can we reduce the carbon emission you know, from the transportation sources and uh, uh, so it said, you know, Modi, Prime Minister Modi said that uh, by 2030 uh, India, you know, Indian Railway will achieve uh, net zero. So what will be the implication of this? Uh, now we have to go for electrification of uh, all you know, railway lines and uh, that's how we can achieve net zero. And uh, he said that you know, by you know, doing this, Indian Railway will help uh, reducing 60 million ton of carbon emission per annum. Uh, so it will be substantial you know, contribution to the, uh, to the emission, carbon emission. And uh, India has also reduced uh, no, um, India has you no know, promoted uh, the use of LED bulbs, uh, you no, know, in in the country by subsidizing the distribution of LED bulbs, and uh, Prime Minister Modi said that uh, you no, know, it will help us uh, uh, reducing 13 million tons of carbon every year. Okay, so uh, people are using LED bulbs, and that helps reducing carbon emission in India. So, Prime Minister Modi says that it's not that only India is doing alone to uh, reduce the carbon emission, rather it is also building institutional capacity at international level to, uh, to reduce the carbon emission. And in that context, uh, you know, India has taken the leadership of uh, International Solar Alliance 
and uh, similarly India has also taken the leadership of uh, international coalition for disaster resilient infrastructure so it is doing alone on its own and it is also promoting uh, by facilitating technology transfer and that's how these institutions will, uh, will really help to promote renewable energy and uh, and reduce the carbon footprints and uh, then Prime Minister Modi said that you know, we should launch a campaign uh, for life and uh, the full form of life is life for environment and uh, uh, he said that you know, we have to go for mindful and deliberate utilization of the resources and the technology uh, which are environmental friendly which reduce the carbon footprint and uh, we have to also adopt a uh, an environment uh, conscious lifestyle you know, which basically use, uh, reduces the carbon footprint and uh, so that means uh, you know, Prime Minister Modi also said that uh, you know, it will help uh, you know, in, in promoting fishery and you know, it will also uh, you know, bring changes in agriculture, wellness uh, and housing projects uh, and clothing and energy. So in many uh, you know, uh, fields that has to you know, be conscious changes and uh, uh, so we have to you know, bring uh, you know, conscious choice you know, for the environment so when we you know, implement something in fact here we can bring in the behavioral economics perspectives that when we do something we have to think okay, whether it will have environmental implications similarly when we implement national projects or even the projects at state level or at uh, panchayat level we have to think whether this will have carbon footprints and whether we can do something which will reduce the carbon footprints and India has set uh, five, five targets for you know, uh, itself to reduce the carbon emission and Prime Minister Modi said that you know uh, we are he basically announced that we are you know going to adopt panchamrit okay, or five uh, he basically said that uh, Pancham five Amrit Sagat. Pancham Amrit Sagat. No, he said. And what are those five targets? That by 2030, India will add 500 gigawatts uh, non-fossil uh, energy capacity. So it will imply that you have to adopt uh, more uh, solar energy, and the other option could be also nuclear energy because uh, you know, solar energy has its own disadvantage and because at night you cannot store this so you no know, have to store this and that has you know, environmental implications and adding uh, to hydropower is also difficult so uh, there would be more uh, emphasis on on the solar energy and uh, i think india also need uh, to give emphasis to the nuclear energy to fulfill you know this target of adding 500 gigawatts non fossil energy capacity. Similarly, the second you know, uh, target announced by the Prime Minister of India is that by 2030, India's 50% energy needs will be fulfilled from you know, renewable sources. So these are again uh, somehow related. We can say that you know, we have to add more renewable energy sources such as you know, solar, wind, power and, uh, and, uh, and nuclear energy. And by 2030, India will reduce 1 billion ton carbon emission, so which is an ambitious plan. And there are many examples like you know, from electricity, we are reducing carbon emission by using LED bulbs, by promoting solar energy, and uh, similarly by promoting clean fuel energy, fuel, uh, and uh, uh, then India is also you know, trying to reduce carbon emission. Uh, through Indian railway that is from transportation sector. So uh, overall by 2030 India will reduce uh, 1 billion ton of carbon emission and uh, then the fourth target set by Prime Minister Modi uh, for India is that by 2030 India will reduce the carbon intensity of growth uh, by 45 percentage. So uh, again that means when you achieve more growth we have to adopt clean technology uh, which does not you know, really add to the pollution rather reduces the carbon emission 
So you have to think about you know the new technologies, the clean technology in every sector, be it agriculture, be it industry, be it uh, construction sector, be it in service sector. Everywhere you have to think about clean technology. And since energy contributes you know the maximum to the uh, carbon emission, if uh, we can you know, uh, use clean energy sources that can substantially reduce uh, the carbon intensity of the growth. And it has also announced that by 2070, India will achieve net zero. In fact, uh, before the COP meeting, uh, COP, uh, you know, there used to be you know lot of discussion whether India should uh, you know agree for achieving net zero because the discussion was that by 2050, in you know, all you know, country member countries should adopt net zero. And uh, so many people were critical of this, and uh, they were saying that India should. Say no to net zero by 2050, and Prime Minister Modi has said that by 2070, India uh, will will achieve net uh, zero carbon emission. Uh, so that means India will get about 50 years uh, time to uh, to change the technology to adopt clean technology, and uh, so it's not that you no. Know, okay, since India has a lot of challenges to reduce poverty. Now we have to ask, you know, basically increase the income, that is basically the GDP, and uh, it uh, we have to create more employment. So, uh, since India has lack of resources, it will, and it has to alleviate poverty, uh, it will take some time for India to, you know, to go for adopting clean technology in all sectors. And uh, you know, as you know, Prime Minister said in the beginning, that India has. 17 percent of the world population, but it contributes only 5 percent to the world emission. So that way, India is you now at you know, a comfortable state, and so India can take some time to you know, reduce you know, the already low level of carbon emission it has. And Prime Minister Modi also uh, made some important appeal to to the world community, and uh, Prime Minister said that. Uh, Uh, climate finance uh, should be you no know, given importance, and because uh, climate finance and technology transfer by the developed uh, uh, developed countries to the developing countries, you no know, have remained a fiasco. Because uh, although you no know, uh, announcements were made in uh, in in Kyoto Protocol and in uh, Paris Agreement that the developed countries would transfer technology and provide finances. To the developing countries for adopting clean uh, technology, it has not happened. Member countries have not really, no, uh, complied with their commitments, and so Prime Minister Modi said that you no, know, we have to track uh, the. There is uh, Prime Minister said that you no, know, there is a need to track the climate finance, whether the really whether all developed countries are you know, really contributing whatever they had you know, announced. So the developed countries should you no know, place. That you no know, one trillion dollar, uh, you no know, uh, for the climate finance because the uh, the earlier amount is not enough and there is a need to increase uh, the amount to one trillion dollar for the climate finance. And uh, Prime Minister Modi also said that uh, just like we are now uh, monitoring whether you know the developing countries or all the countries are complying with the Paris Agreement. Uh, which basically said that you no know, have to reduce the carbon emission. So we are tracking the country member countries whether they are reducing carbon emission or not. So in the similar fashion, now we should the uh, COP conference of parties should now monitor the uh, climate finance. And uh, if some countries do not comply with uh, the uh, climate finance uh, no, uh, commitments. Uh, then we have to put pressure on those non-compliant countries so that you know the developing countries can you know easily you no know, transition you no know, achieve the transition to move towards you no know, clean energy sources so that way uh, you no know, india has uh, made you know, very big commitments we can say at cop uh, 26 uh, and uh, now indian policy makers uh, have to Uh, basically, take it seriously and uh, uh, work on that. How to basically reduce uh, the carbon emission in, in different sources. So uh, I hope other member countries would also 
make important announcements uh, we have to see in the coming days uh, how the developed world you know, commits to the uh, climate finance and technology transfer okay, that can only help uh, you know, achieving climate justice and in fact uh, uh, india has uh, uh, announced in fact indian scientists have launched a website uh, just before the cup uh, uh, which will basically monitor the climate justice yeah. so this is the website uh, our indian scientists have launched uh, before the cop uh, 26 meeting uh, that is uh, climate equity monitor uh, dot in where you now we can see the uh, contribution of different countries uh, to the carbon emission and uh, we can we can track so uh, this will put the pressure on uh, on the international community to reduce the carbon emissions. That's all. Thank you very much for watching this video.